Alright guys, welcome uh, to a quick balance discussion with uh, Mana. Uh, we had a new patch coming in, or at least patch notes that Blizzard is currently thinking about implementing and they're currently testing it on a few of the test maps. And I have Mana with me to shed a little bit of light from a pro's perspective on uh, what exactly Blizzard is doing these days. So Mana, let's talk a little bit about the first uh, change right away. One of the biggest problems that apparently like most Terran players have in the matchup now is that Blink Stalker Illens are really, really strong. And I feel that the first two changes that Blizzard has here are addressing that right away. It's actually really interesting since the Mothership Core Vision radius reduction that we see now coming in as the first test change is something that was suggested on Reddit when people were talking about how you could actually like make that maybe a little bit less strong. What do you think exactly about how the uh, reduction of the Mothership Core Vision radius is going to affect the matchup? Mm, uh, I mean, I would like to see that first in the on the map because I don't know what's the exact difference for the Mothership Core Vision. Uh, it's 14 to 9, so it's like it looks quite a strong nerf. Uh, I don't know how uh, much of a vision I will have with the Mothership Core now, but it's mainly for the uh, scouting purposes and uh, defending Lincoln as a Terran. Uh, because usually your mothership is mothership core is on the on the back and you Terran usually like have no opportunity to to snipe it and then Protoss uh, always have the higher uh, higher vision and always Protoss sees the Terran army with the mothership core as well so it might be a good change but I'm uh, I would like to see that first in, in the map uh, it may also affect uh, PVZ as well for example for the Viper timings the mothership core gave you a big vision. Uh, f uh, to feedback the vipers, for example, and also gave a lot of vision for the uh, potential like uh, uh, army movements of Zerg because there was uh, usually Zerg doesn't have uh, early anti-air. Just talking a little bit about the uh, blink stock all and just in general. I mean, we had to build already in Wings of Liberty back then. Of course, you needed robotics to do that. If it turns out that the mothership core vision is really now becoming a bit of an issue and that you're like too vulnerable or too likely losing it, do you think that playing the same all in, playing blink stalkers again uh, just with the added robo and the observers for the high ground vision is still an option or is that because of the changes of Heart of the Swarm not really viable anymore? Mm, I think like with the observer it just delays the timing so much, but it's possible. It's actually becoming more and more popular now uh, because Terrans. I mean, there's a lot of mind games going on now between Protoss and Terrans. Like Terran scouts the Twilight Council, so Terran thinks Protoss is actually committing to Blinkolin. But then Protoss actually doesn't commit. But maybe Terran thinks he actually thinks he doesn't commit, and so on and so on. And therefore, usually it goes like Twilight Council and Robo. Almost like at the same time, it's become more and more popular. Uh, it's just weaker, much weaker. It's not a commitment to an all in. It's more likely a pressure build then, not an all in. It's still dangerous for a Terran because if he doesn't commit it to the fence, maybe not even uh, close as much as for the committal uh, blink all in, then he might lose a lot of uh, resources and like units for free, for example, with the mothership core vision. But because of the vision decrease now, uh, the scouting of, of uh, the protest will, uh, of the Terran army by protest will be just decreased. So uh, it might be not even a good idea to commit to an all in now, but uh, I actually, it's, it's really hard to say. However, that's just my opinion for now. Uh, it's actually a really good point, like talking about the committing, because looking at the second change that we have is also a reduction or an increase in the cooldown for Blink. And I feel that seems to be like a pretty harsh change. I think that once again Blizzard is tar trying to target the Terran versus Protoss matchup here, but that of course affects the, the Blink star guys in every single matchup. And given that we already have a reduction on the Mothership Core Vision, which makes it a little bit more difficult of actually like having the high ground vision against the Terran player when you try to go for a blink build. Now in addition to that, seeing the increase in the cooldown, do you think that Blizzard even overdoes it a little bit and uh, makes it so that a blink stalker or a commitment to the all-in is not really working anymore? Or do you think it's still going to be very strong? Yeah, I think it's 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 overdoing that. Like we just had a nerf on Mothership Core Time Warp, which costs 100 energy now. We have the vision radius decreased from 14 to 9 in Mothership Core, and now we have even blink cooldown increased from 10 to 15. That's 50 percent more. I I don't really see that. Like I don't see a reason to do that. Uh, like it, the blink cooldown is usually a map problem, uh, especially like Heavy Rain and Yonso are the best maps to do that because the main is so exposed to blinks. And let's see a map like Habitation Station. There is no opportunity for the Blink Stalkers. So I think it's overdoing that for sure. And it's going to affect PvP a lot, even more than Blizzard think, I think, because Blink Stalkers are very popular nowadays in PvP. And PvZ, well, um, it, Blink Stalkers are really popular. Like in PvZ, of course, uh, they're a very good unit. But 
and it's not a huge change. Like, maybe the all-ins, of course, will be weaker, but I really think it's overdoing that, especially for PvP and PvT. I, I really don't like this, this change. So would you be okay with, let's say, a blink change if the mothership core radio, uh, the side radius is still the same, so that you're able to hit the same timings without a robo? Or do you just think that in general this change, this one change in particular, is already overdoing it? I think it's just this change overdoing. Like decreasing the range is okay because I can understand it's being too much. But uh, well, if we are going to get used to the range of mothership core now. We will just have more awareness of the scouting uh, we, uh, with the mothership core range decreased. Uh, just uh, this blink cooldown increasing is just overdoing that. I really don't like. Okay, um, talking about the third change, I'm not quite sure if that's really like the the targets here also against the uh, against the all ins that we see from uh, Protoss. It's definitely something that's going to help a little bit. We have the widow mine splash damage component that changed a little bit. So you have now. Um, 40 damage and then plus 40 damage to shields. That seems to make them a lot more viable against Protoss in particular and one of the things that Blizzard apparently also wants to address that right now when a Terran player commits let's say to a drop with Widow Mines quite often you see him kill one probe with a hit and that's it. So apparently Blizzard really trying to make Widow Mines more of a viable unit against Protoss in general. What do you think about that? Uh, we already had the Widow Mines splash damage being very good in the beginnings of Heart of the Swarm, yeah, then it got that. nerfed, <laughs> yeah, we already got it nerfed, and then we are getting back here again, like, what? what is the point, like, it's plus 40 shield damage, so the splash on the probes is going to be quite strong, so, I, I don't know, Blizzard, like, there's, I don't see the reason, I mean, of course, they want to make it more aggressive, and I can understand that, uh, Widow Mines now are very popular, if you can see uh, games of 4GG, for example, for Asus Rock, and Jack G's games as well, uh, from IEM, uh, a lot of Terrans are doing a lot of Widow Mine drops into like free, uh, free barracks stim timing. It just delays stim, but it's still uh, being possible. Uh, it's it's possible to be aggressive with Widow Mines. It's not guaranteed damage. You can, as you said, sometimes it uh, leaves you with one probe kill, but it's if a Protoss is prepared for it. And usually Protoss is prepared for it because we scout with the Mothership Core and we see the starport from the long run because of the <laughs> high range. So Which you don't do now anymore. <laughs> yeah, we will not do that anymore. <laughs> Uh, just maybe we will start like maybe we will start like sentry first in the hallucination to scout for the starport, but I'm not really sure. Well, we are still talking about a test patch here, so they're really trying yeah. to just like test the waters a little bit. But just in general, it seems like all these three changes that we've talked about so far combined are just very strong. In my opinion, like if the Terran player now suddenly decides to go into Widow Mines, are you even able to do anything if you go into a Twilight Council build? I mean. Earlier on, like in the, for example, at the Aces, we saw that as well. If a Protoss player decided to go into the Twilight build and the Terran player went straight into a drop with Widow Mines, you could still get your detection out. You could, you would suffer some losses, but if you had like good micro on the probes, good spread and pulled them to the natural, for example, or whatever, you could still like dodge the biggest part of the damage. And with the damage that you dealt yourself, you were kind of in an okay position. Right now, it seems like. Widow Mines are much stronger, so you need to have the detection out faster. Your entire Twilight Council tech is going to be much, much weaker since we have now a reduced vision on the Mothership Core, which makes the timing a little bit later. If you need a Robo, that would of course solve the Widow Mine, um, the Widow Mine problem again if you really wait for that. But it feels like this pure Twilight Council Blinkstalker aggression is absolutely not working anymore right now. Yeah, we are going to have to uh, adjust builds again because if we are going to use the same builds as uh, from now in the next patch, the Widow Mines are going to be very strong and can deal a lot of damage because of the buff. Uh, I think we are going to get to the point again where every Protoss is going to have one cannon in the middle line, doesn't matter what they are going to scout because of the potential of Widow Mines. Just like when in Hellbutt drops, I think it's going to be very similar. Mm. I, I don't like it i don't dislike i mean I, I like it and i dislike it at the same time i want to see how big of a change is going to be actually in game because photon overcharge is of course great but uh, usually the timing with the widow with the two widow mines and four marine job hits when photon over uh, when the mothership core doesn't have 200 energy so you can't even for them to photon overcharges and even if you do it doesn't guarantee that the photon overcharge will kill the widow mine before it actually burrows. So I want to see that before I actually uh, be very harsh on Blizzard by even thinking yeah. about this change. Do you agree though that there had to be some change made? Do you think that in the current situation that we have in the game, Protoss against Terran has too much of a good position in the early game, especially with what we already talked about, like at ACRG we saw it a lot. You go into uh, the, the, twi uh, the blink build and then you can still 
just go back into natural, contain the tyrant, play a little bit in a fun tyrant. Tyrant it was very difficult to really like estimate. Okay, is there going to be a commitment by the Protoss player, or is there not? If your early reapers are taken out, you have just very limited information about what's going on. Do you think there had to be a change, or do you think it was actually fine and tyrant players would have figured something out over time? Mm, well, we have to say for sure that the blink stalker all in and the pressure build is. Possibly one of the best builds in game, considering all matchups. But I don't really know about TVZ and ZVZ. But f as for those matchups, I think it's the strongest build because you can be uh, aggressive and passive at the same time and be very well defended against anything that turn throws at you before the first two medivac timing. Uh, so if there had to be a change, then I think the mothership core vision is is good enough. Uh, <laughs> about the widow mines, uh, it's actually going to be very funny because. Uh, lately, Terrans has been using Widow Mines against Twilight Council build as well, when it's like High Templars and, and so on. They started to uh, add up Widow Mines to, to their army composition. So now with plus, the, plus 40 shield damage, additional damage for, for the Widow Mines, I think they're going to be... We Protoss will have to be like w much more careful with like sending 1A Zealots mm. uh, in the, into the army of Terran, for example. But uh, as I said, I, I, don't, I want to see this uh, before I make any judgments. And if there had to be any... Uh, and a decision to be made, so I think just the vision for the Mothership Core for the Blink Allen is, is good enough. Okay. Uh, we're switching matchups a little bit with the fourth change that Blizzard is currently experimenting with. We have a bit of a change to Tempest ground damage. There was an increase with like 32 structures, which is kind of apparently designed to uh, make sure that Zerg players can't turtle this much anymore. Uh, your personal opinion about Swarm Host at this point? Uh, well, <laughs> I've been, you know, I've, I had just one very late game, PV no, actually two of them, like in, in two weeks or so, because yeah. I usually died earlier or I killed Zerg earlier, but like the very, very late games, the, the same position, I had two games and one I won and one I lost. I lost uh, one versus Stefano and I won one versus, I don't know, some barcode. Uh, and it was only Tempest for me, basically. Mm -hmm. And I had like 30 of them or I don't know, like 28, something like that, uh, Tempest. and. It doesn't matter that we have plus 30 to the structures because we are going to one-shot buildings anyway with that many Tempests, but if they want to increase the structure damage, then like less Tempest would be more powerful. But I don't know if that's the solution to the problem of, of the passive uh, passive Swarmhole style. Like It was even being mentioned that PVT, uh, Proxy's Tempest, is being used. Like, what? <laughs> like, I've never even seen that in a tournament. <laughs> I didn't even know that it exists. Like, I was really surprised when I saw this even so being mentioned. So David gave you a new idea there. You're going to toy around. Yeah, with I mean, bit. like, when I was streaming, I did some Proxy Tempest <laughs> stuff, but, like, just for fun and versus, like, weak Terrans. Maybe I was watching. But I didn't that. know. <laughs> Sorry? Maybe David was watching. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe David was watching my stream. Yeah, <laughs> greetings to David, then. <laughs> So, uh, what do you think would be a better attempt to actually like balance that matchup a little bit and work against that really like passive Zerg style that you've been mentioning? If Tempest and uh, additional damage against Spore Crawlers is not the answer, uh, you know, it's very hard to make the perfect decision. Uh, my opinion for now, I've been thinking of. I'm not sure if it's good. Uh, I'm not sure how it worked out in the in the practice. But like, uh, first of all, Locus not being upgraded, just like Broodlings, uh, maybe. Uh, then maybe Locus not being able to give vision to Zerg, just like we have no vision when like Tempest shoots or whatever, just we have the relevation or so. Because the main problem is Locus giving the vision, and then Zerg comes with a clump up of five Vipers and twenty Corruptors, and you can't feed back five of them all, this, all, uh, all of them at the same time because of the overseers at the same location, uh, and then just grab like Mothership, Tempest, and you can never do anything with it, basically, with the, with the uh, Locus giving them range, uh, the, the vision. So that might be the biggest problem, I think. But I don't have the perfect solution for now, so I'm not even sure if it's a good idea to, to even consider. All right, I mean, we're going to see if we have more proxy tempests now being played, if that's going to be a new thing. <laughs> But oh, yeah, in addition, in addition for, I would like Mothership not to be abductable, because... Why? It's it's a single <laughs> unit. Because why? I mean, seriously, I want to. I, I mean, if this video is going to be popular, I want to people know that the only unit that is upgraded and is getting worse is the mothership, right? Because it's doesn't even have the photon overcharge. So I wanted this video to be popular and let people know. It was actually a really interesting idea to make the mothership core or the mothership itself not abductable. I never really thought about that, but I think you have a pretty good point there because you can build only one of them, so it has to be yeah. like a little bit special right now. An ultralisk even can be abductable in Fungold, man. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> 
Oh, no, but it's actually a pretty good point. But yeah, coming back to uh, the last change that we have there, and that was a little bit of a weird one. Apparently, Blizzard really thinks right now that Hydra lists are very weak. I personally <laughs> hoped, of course, as every other Zerg player in the world was hoping for, that in the last suggestions that they had, the Hydra lists were only 25 mana. I mean, Zerg players all over the globe were like behind like those, but like, yeah, that's that's horribly imba, but we really hope that it goes through <laughs> because then we're going to win everything for months. But Blizzard even realized that, okay, maybe we shouldn't go for that. That might be a bit too strong. Now they approach it from a bit of a different angle. We have an increase in uh, or a decrease in uh, the attack speed. Uh, an, an increase in attack speed, a decrease in uh, between the, between attacks. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, do you think that Hydras are too weak? Yeah, I mean, like... Like, well, first of all, like uh, in the previous patch notes, I see the Hydra buff of the cost. I'm like, I mean, is there anyone even complaining on Hydra's being too weak? Like, what? I would have played Hydra this. all the time and then massive yeah. Hydra Lisk switches. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, seriously, like, how can you even consider that? This is retarded. And then I see this patch, Hy Hydra's uh, attack speed being increased. Uh, there's no one complaining about Hydra's being too weak. They see uh, a needing in a buff in TVZ and ZVZ. In Hydras, and then they don't think about PVZ, I guess. Uh, I, I mean, it's, it's looking to be a big change, but there's no complaints about Hydras being too weak. They, maybe some Zergs are complaining about the anti air, because it, which is true that the Zerg anti air is not really like uh, as strong as others. For example, Corruptors are strong, but not very strong against like pure, <laughs> pure Void Race, for example. Uh, but the best anti-air Zerg has is the Queens with the Transfuse and the upgrades and with the sports under underneath, it's that best anti-air. So, so I don't see the reason for Hydralisk buff now, I think. So you would think that making Queens faster is the way to go? <laughs> I mean, there's still Zergs who do a lot of Queens, man. <laughs> I, I played Dimaga no, some time ago and he made like pure, pure Queen and Corruptors versus me and some Hydras, uh, but it didn't work <laughs> I mean, with the higher lists right now, I'm actually really interested to see how exactly that hits because that seems to be like quite strong. It's only like a slight buff in attack speed, but at the same time, the DPS of Hydras is already pretty insane, I'd say. So I'm just thinking. I think it's about the it. best in the game, right? I think the Hydras DPS is the highest in the game, or the Ultras. But I mean, it's still like uh, the the attack speed is it's like it looks like a small change but the amount of hydras hydras uh, that there is in the game is going to make a huge change it's I not like the tank, siege tank change like I in the previous day the best dps unit wasn't that like either one of the big sky units like battle cruiser or carry or something like that tempest like, uh, <laughs> I, I don't think so about tempest but yeah no but, but like either way i'm just thinking about let's say a protoss player relying on one of the two base all ins again going for let's say um just simple immortal push and then hydra is already be really good answer if you're able to go into layer fast enough and now with the buff even as well it seems like these pushes have no chance now anymore yeah very very good point i was thinking about it before we actually started recording this that i wanted to mention that the immortal push against the hydras is going to be way way weaker hmm. Uh, Hydra's being very strong anyway now, and with they getting the buff, I think Immortal Push might be disappearing completely, but Parting might disagree. <laughs> <laughs> well, Parting has the soul to go with that, so yeah, I yeah. totally will. Uh, just in general, like looking at those five changes that we have right now, do you think, I mean, it's a patch, it's like a test patch, so there's still a little mm -hmm. bit of wiggle room and they will definitely experiment with that and have a look at what kind of data they get. Do you think, uh, so, and I also think, just to mention that again, for everyone who's currently watching, that a lot of these changes might be just a little bit over the top to see people really test them out and then maybe adjust a little bit. We talked about the blink cooldown being uh, increased from like 10 to 15 seconds, so they could in the end decide to just say like, all right, 10 to 15 is too much, but the direction that we were going for is the right one. We're just going to go for like 12 or 13. Do you think that the approaches in general, or the ideas that they have here, uh, good that it's like something where it's really worth experimenting with or is it something where you say like in the last patch where you look at it and you say like what hydralis only half the gas cost suddenly why would you even think about that so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well definitely a good idea with the mothership core uh, that's the right approach because we can see blink all ins being very very popular and not even all ins but just like standard builds with blink all in being pressure uh, so that's a very good approach Blink cooldown? Uh, no, as I said, I don't <laughs> like it. Uh, I mean, as you said, they might adjust it to like 12 and so, but I don't even see a reason why to increase the, the cooldown on Blink. It's just a map, uh, map problem, not, not the ability. Uh, overall, 
I mean, I would like to test them up, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, so far, I'm not happy with, with these changes. Uh, I would like them to uh, to change something else. And if you want to see like drastic changes in Protoss, then make it drastic. But I don't think it's it's a good uh, good way to do it in Heart of the Swarm now because well, we see a lot of tournaments in uh, in like good good money there, so we don't want to make drastic changes now. Uh, probably in Legacy of the Void, there are being drastic changes for Protoss because it really needs to be redesigned. Talking about that for a second, because I really like what you're just saying right now, and maybe this goes a little bit over the top, but like I think we discussed this already a little bit when we were in Korea. Moro at some point really had this long article where he was talking about force fields being one of the biggest problems in the game, that like really good force fields can win you a fight. If you miss one, you immediately lose the fight. Protoss right now, without force fields, cannot survive. I mean, I think we all agree on that. You need that yeah. in the game, that mechanic. You kind of just simply remove it. But you mentioning Legacy of the Void and having like redesign. Do you think in... Uh, Legacy of the Void, it would be, even though it's a drastic, drastic change, a good option for Blizzard to really rethink Protoss as a race, remove, for example, Force Fields completely, and then just because it's a new it's a new game, it's a new add-on, just say like, all right, we remove the Force Fields, Protoss can't survive without Force Fields right now, so we have to redesign the race around the lack of Force Fields and make different... Would that be something where you say, that makes sense, I would like to see that, or is it something where you're like, oh my god, this goes way too far? I wouldn't say that makes sense. I would say do it. Uh, I want to force fields be removed. I want to be fungal, be redesigned, that it doesn't stop units completely. I want Colossus to be removed as well, because this is a complete no micro unit, and that's not what we want in StarCraft. For example, I love the way Terran is designed. I think it's the best designed race, and to, if you are good as a Terran, you're a great player, you're going to have... Uh, a lot of uh, achievements and so on. We can see Tasia Innovation MMA, for example. But if you are bad, the other races which are not designed as well as Terran, you're not going to get, uh, get any achievements. I think Terran is the best designed race in Starka because it requires so much micro and so much macro and mechanics at the same time to play at a strong level. It doesn't require as much as a Protoss or as a Zerg, I think. Okay, cool. Thank you really much for the insights and uh, for speaking your mind. And uh, just one question. Is it laundry day right now? Laundry day? Oh yeah, <laughs> it's right there. <laughs> I was seeing that thing the entire right time. I was like, okay, <laughs> apparently someone just made a laundry. It's getting dry, man. I'm going to wear some things soon. I'm going to. I am Cologne, man. I had to make laundry. Okay, uh, you're going to bed probably now soon, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. that's right. So, Mana, I wish you a good night. Thanks again uh, for like joining me, and I guess we are probably going to talk soon. So, have yeah. a good one. Bye bye. No problem, Thomas. See ya.